Hello and welcome. My name is Harshil Shah. I am a Senior Partner Solutions Architect here at AWS. Every day, I work with large enterprise customers and partners to help them improve their security, resilience, operations and governance of their AWS cloud. Managing security and governance at scale is a common challenge for many enterprises. Leaders want to empower their teams to deliver quickly with autonomy while providing clear and effective controls that maintain the high levels of security their customers demand. While customers wanting to deliver with security and agility at scale. We understand this need. So today I'm going to show you how to organize your AWS environment using multiple accounts, a best practice that AWS recommends for security, governance and operational efficiency. Whether you are just starting with AWS or looking to better organize your existing environment, this video will walk you through the key concepts and steps to build a proper multi-account strategy using AWS organizations. Before we get started, let's do a quick rundown on the topics we will cover in today's video. We will first understand what customers want to do on AWS. Identify current challenges they face. Why do they choose to use multi accounts for their AWS environments? We will then dive deep into AWS organizations and how it solves for multi account deployments. I will then provide you recommendations on possible organization structures. I will also provide guidance on implementing control across your AWS accounts. We will then dive into the AWS console to demonstrate one of the org structures that we discussed in action. To wrap up, I will summarize the best practices on scaling your AWS accounts within the organizations and discuss the next steps. Customers want what do customers want to do on AWS? Customers want to build applications in the cloud for their business needs. They want to constantly innovate and deliver value at a rapid pace, all while remaining secure and compliant to their organizational security boundaries. Now let us find out what challenges do they face. Customer tell us that they want to quickly set up and configure a new environment in a consistent manner. They need to perform cloud operations centrally for their scaling needs along with enhanced visibility and control. Many enterprises are in the process of mergers and acquisitions and looking to consolidate their AWS accounts for centralized governance and management. Keeping up with ever changing compliance and regulatory requirements can be time consuming as well as difficult to manage for them. Customers that are migrating to AWS need to move workloads from an on-premises environment, hosting facility or any other cloud provider securely and efficiently. During business transitions such as M&A and divestures in partnerships, customers need to rapidly migrate assets while ensuring efficient, secure and compliant transitions. They want centralized network management as they don't want each account owner to be spinning off their own VPC. Additionally, they also want centralized security operations to enforce security controls and be able to manage their environment abiding by specific regulatory requirements of an organization. Customers want to define and enforce controls while providing speed and agility for their developers. Before we dive into the how, let's quickly understand why you had want to use multiple AWS accounts instead of putting everything in one account. Customers like yourself typically have a large number of teams and various businesses processes in place depending on their operational, regulatory and budgetary requirements and managing governing them centrally. They can achieve their needs by setting up multiple AWS accounts in AWS environment and centrally manage their accounts within an organization. It enables rapid innovation across distributed teams and individuals. Similar to how customers can spin up EC2 instances in minutes, customers can create and provision new accounts and AWS resources for teams in minutes. 
New accounts reduce the scope of impact via isolation. For example, a potential bug in one account is contained within the account and cannot impact others. In addition, these accounts are natural resource boundaries where access to one account does not cross over into others without first allowing permissions. Lastly, costs are incurred at the account level, so activity and costs can be identified with each account. With multiple accounts, customers can simplify billing where resources used within an AWS account can be allocated to the business unit that is responsible for that account. It's worth noting that not all AWS customers start with a single account. Some customers may migrate to AWS and set up multiple accounts to start so they can achieve the same benefits as described here. AWS organization also allows customers to centrally manage and govern separate accounts within the same environment. Let's shift from right to the left on this slide where we have a basic organization structure in its simplest form. Spread across three organizational units, one each for workloads, security and infrastructure which are dedicated units for its specific purpose. As we move right, we expand into a enterprise grade AWS organization structure which includes multiple accounts in each of the OUs discussed on the left. This is the most common structure we find large enterprises utilize and expand upon for their AWS environments. One of the most powerful features of AWS organizations is service control policies or SCPs in short. This, these policies let you set controls across your organization by restricting which AWS services and actions are available in member accounts. Additionally, you have resource policies that can be applied at an instance level and declarative policies that allow you to centrally define and enforce desired configuration for AWS services across your organization, ensuring consistent behavior even as service evolves. For customers at enterprise scale with large number of applications and distributed teams, cloud setup and governance can be complex and time consuming. This results in slowing down the innovation customers are trying to speed up. To manage user access across accounts, leverage AWS Identity Center that manages permissions centrally through organizations. This lets your team use their existing corporate credentials to access appropriate AWS accounts without creating individual IAM users in each account. As you scale beyond a handful of accounts, automation becomes essential. Use infrastructure as code tools like AWS CloudFormation or Terraform to manage your environment consistently. With AWS organizations, you can use CloudFormation stack sets to deploy resources across multiple accounts simultaneously. If this all sounds like a lot to set up manually, you might want to consider AWS Control Tower, which automates the setup of a landing zone based on AWS organizations. AWS Control Tower implements many of these best practices automatically, creating the initial structure and governance controls for you. This is the base architecture or foundation that AWS Control Tower provides to customers as they are starting to build their multi-account environment. The log archive account and audit account names can be changed at the time of the launch. Same for security OU. With AWS Control Tower, you can easily provision new AWS accounts using the AWS Account Factory. Account Factory creates new AWS account with the baseline security posture enabled by controls. As part of this framework, AWS Control Tower automatically enables AWS CloudTrail and Config and enables centralized login to an Amazon S3 bucket located in a log archive account. It pre-configures Amazon simple notification service topics that other services could subscribe to. It provides federated access to accounts using AWS IAM Identity Center. It also enables controls to protect the resources deployed by AWS Control Tower and detects non-compliance across multiple accounts. 
it supports lifecycle events which allows you to configure any additional custom automations as part of new account creation. Finally, it launches resource control policies as well as declarative policies, managed hooks and backup integration all in one deployment. Now let's log into the AWS console and navigate to AWS organization page to demonstrate our multi-account structure for this demo. At the core of AWS organization console view, it has AWS accounts that displays organizational hierarchy containing all the OUs and accounts that are created. You can notice there is a management account which is a standalone account to all other AWS accounts created in its specific OUs. It is a recommended best practice to keep the management account separate than all other accounts in the organization. Next, we are going to apply a service control policy to restrict our production account with least privilege access. To do that, we will first go to policies on the AWS organizations console that offers seven different types of policies and ensure service control policies are enabled. You can also enable other policies such as RCPs and declarative policies that we discussed earlier. Now for the purpose of this demo, I have applied a SCP on the production OU. So let's let me navigate to the production OU and go to the account that is listed there and look at the policy. If you notice, I have applied a service control policy called deny access to modify anything in this account. This will ensure that an IAM user has only read permissions within the account and it will restrict the user to create or modify any resources in this production account. Let us see this in action. If you notice, this account is ending in 5831. I'm going to log into this account where it, you can verify that it's logged into the account ending in 5831. And you can notice that I am access denied to any kind of service catalog actions or even look at the cost and usage report for this account. This is coming from the service control policy that I have applied on this organizational unit. Once on the S3 console, I am able to list all the S3 buckets that are created in my account, which is an intended action for the user to be allowed to, where they can list the resources, but they cannot modify the resources. So let me quickly try and empty this bucket. So to do that, I would need to type in here permanently delete and trigger this operation. As you notice, it has started to complete the operation. However, there are no objects that are successfully deleted. It will show you the number of objects that failed deletion and you should be able to see the error here which mentions that S3 delete object version on resource was, was not authorized to perform with an explicit deny in the service control policy. So this is the intended behavior where we wanted to restrict the user to make any modifications in our environment. This completes the demo on how multi-account structure can be created and protected from unauthorized access. To wrap up, let's quickly recap some best practices to deploy a multi-account structure on AWS. It is recommended to organize based on security and operational needs. You can apply security controls to OUs rather than accounts. Avoid deep OU hierarchies, starting small and expanding as needed. 
avoiding deploying workloads to the organization's management account, separating production from non-production workloads, assigning a single or small set of related workloads to each production account, using federated access to help simplify managing human access to accounts, and finally, use of automation to support agility and scale. Thank you for sticking around and listening to me till the end of this video. These security controls and account structures are foundational to building a robust enterprise grade AWS environment. By implementing these recommendations, you will significantly enhance your security posture while maintaining operational efficiency. I encourage you to scan the QR codes and review these resources and begin your implementation journey today. Remember, Security is everyone's job, but it starts with the right architecture. Please reach out to your AWS account teams if you have any questions. Thank you and have a nice day.